Hi, I'm Jay. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, I was going through some old jigs recently um, and I actually found something that was pretty cool. I believe they might not be the very first jigs I ever tied, but uh, these are some oldies. So this discovery led into conversations with other YouTubers and uh, just a, to me a very interesting topic on what was the first jig you learned how to tie or that jig that you tied that after finishing it you knew that you were going to be a, a jig tire for life. So um, I'm going to show you some of my original jigs um, going back 40 plus years and we have uh, a jig from another tire and I think you'll enjoy. Stay tuned. So I connected with Dave from Double Hook Angling, who is giving us an example of one of the very first jigs he tied. I'm sure if you watch and follow other jig tires here on YouTube, you've probably seen some of Dave's, Dave's work. Um, I enjoy watching his videos um, because he takes um, an interesting approach to um, completing some techniques. Um, watch some of his crappy jig tying videos. Uh, and pay attention to how he does his tail. A little bit different than most other tires, um, but it works. It's a really good technique, works really well. So I think you'll enjoy what we got going on today. Hey y'all, Dave here, Double Hook Angling. Hey, uh, <clears throat> when I, I wanna talk about my very first jig that I ever tied. And uh, what I did was when I was a young man, oh, I don't even remember how old I was, probably 13 or 14 and uh, <clears throat> I got a uh, little piece of junk vice and I don't even remember where I got it I think it was at a bait shop or I just I, it memory escapes me from where I got that vice but uh, I, I might even have got it from my aunt because they, they had a bait shop my aunt and uncle back in the day but um, anyways, I, uh, my first jig, I took hair off of my dog and it was a little schnauzer poodle mix and I don't want to go find a schnauzer poodle mix. So we're going to substitute rabbit for that. But I use a store-bought jig and I looked and I don't have any store-bought jigs, uh, at the moment. Um, so we're going to use one of mine. And back then it did have a gold hook, so we're keeping that the same. Now, <clears throat> what I did was I uh, we we trimmed our dog, so we took it to the groomer. But sometimes we do it ourselves, and that's where I'd get the hair. So don't think I was like pulling the hair out of the dog or nothing because I wasn't. So, but anyways, we're gonna take in. Uh, also, I used uh, sewing thread uh, then to tie my jigs, but. To kind of keep with that, I am going to use uh, a black just to kind of show you that, you know, it is what it is. And I, if I remember right, the first head I used was a sour trees head, and uh, it might have been yellow. I just, like I said, that's been many years ago, a few gray hairs back. So, um, but to get started, you're going to uh, wrap this and get it locked in and I'm going to drop this down on the shank of the hook a little bit right there and then you're going to get you some rabbit you're going to take your rabbit and you're going to separate out your rabbit now <clears throat> get you a chunk of that off and I remember my first jig was pretty sparse as far as the tail was but <clears throat> I can't quite remember how much I think I, you know thinking back to when that far back tying something is is you know now what you would consider as simple as a jig back then it was you know it was amazing that you were able to as a kid tie something of the sort so and that right there is probably roughly about 
what I had. So, sorry if you have a little trouble seeing that jig. Let me get it up there. There you go. I got a little catch in my shoulder. <laughs> it's kind of hard to lift that vice up. But, <clears throat> you get it wrapped up. And as I was a kid, I wrapped it a lot. So, I'm kind of just trying to remember what I did. Um, then, uh, for the body... We had uh, somebody that had peacocks. So we had a lot of peacock around. And what I did was I took some peacock. And I, like I said, it was three or four pieces back then. Just to make it a lot. Because you need a lot to cover this. And it might even have been more. But you're going to take those. Trim them all even. And start right up at the front. And I get all those wrapped on. And back then, you know, the... Uh, it was, everybody kind of got started. So with uh, tying in different ways, there wasn't YouTube to explain all this to everybody. So, you know, gratefully we have YouTube now and other, you know, links to videos. Now you're going to take this peacock and you're going to twist it around your thread. And then you're going to just kind of grab up there and you're just going to wrap this peacock. Now, when I did these back I know they were real skinny jigs, but we uh, we always used 16th ounce, and that's what I'm using here, and we would go out and we'd catch these bluegill that were, you know, six, seven inches long down there where I grew up at it, down in Possum Kingdom Lake, Texas is where it was at, so shout out to everybody at Possum Kingdom Lake. As a... Uh, Local down there, we all called it PK Lake. I'm sure they still do. I haven't been down there in probably 10 years or so. I really miss the fishing and stuff down there. It's kind of different than what we do here. But as you get that wrapped up, then you just whip it off. And when I was a kid, I did have a whip finisher. Kind of, it was a little set with my vise that I got. And get that cleaned up a little better. But as a child, you learn how to tie and you learn from mistakes and you tie all kinds of weird, funny looking things. So, you know, this is just kind of a funny looking little jig in some people's eyes. But I always liked the way that, uh, get it up closer, there you go. I always liked the way the peacock sheened off of the light, the way that it reflects and stuff. So... Hey guys, that's my uh, childhood first jig. This is what really got me into, you know, tying flies. I'm sorry I didn't have no uh, poodle uh, schnauzer mix hair, but, you know, rabbit will do. So, hey, want to thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you. Like and subscribe. Hey, go tie something. Have a great day, guys. Bye. So I'm at the Vice today doing something a little bit different. I was going through some of my old file drawers that I have with uh, old jigs, um, jigs that I found at different shops, color combinations I like, material combinations that are interesting, um, even things like plugs and, and, and uh, flies that um, just catch my eye. I'll buy them and I throw them in a drawer and it kind of helps with um, being a little creative, um, inspires me, and you know. But I save them, and I throw them all in a file cabinet. I came across an envelope uh, going back 40 plus years of some of the very first jigs that I tied. Um, this led to conversations with some other YouTubers, and uh, like I mentioned in the intro. Um, a conversation I had with Dave from Double Hook Angling, uh, where he, we're going to tie uh, the jigs that um, were either our first jig or uh, was that jig that once you tied it, you knew like I'm hooked. I'm going to be a I'm going to be a tire. Like that's that's part of me. So let's switch here. And so this envelope, it's an old Ziploc bag. It says Jay's first jigs. Um, 
and then in parentheses before dad and correct thread. Not exactly sure what that meant <laughs> since it was tied so long ago. I do remember tying these. Um, I had taken some old jigs from my tackle box that were beat up and used. Uh, the hair was falling off. Um, I must have caught fish on them. I'm sure I did. But let me put in the vise. These are all three of these are tied with bucktail, and it looks like sewing thread, um, maybe even cotton thread because it's fuzzy. It doesn't look like there is any head cement on these. And this head's kind of crusty. All of these heads have, have some sort of crust on them. So like I said, it was they these were used. So this is a 132nd head. And uh, I believe it's a number 6 hook. Uh, the Mustad 32760. It's just a uh, chartreuse head. And this is just natural bucktail. It's, it's natural brown and it's got white. Uh, mixed in there. Um, I got hairs sticking out of the collar. I got different lengths of hair on this. Here's some longer tips and then the majority of the tail <laughs> comes to about here. The other one with a chartreuse head, again the same sewing thread, no head cement. And again, look at this bucktail, how long hairs come out to here, but the tail itself, the majority of it stops at about where my finger is, about halfway up the jaws of my vise. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of under fur and fuzz sticking out here. And this last one, again, that pink head, the same type of sewing thread. This might have been the last one I did. It's a little bit better. But again, the bucktail. Um, the, the, there's longer hairs that stick out. There's shorter hairs. So pulling back the hairs that are about the correct size, you can see that um, there's a lot of short under hairs on these. So these jigs, I remember tying them. I, re I remember tying these. Um, I, I kind of remember them being old and beat up. Um, and I pulled the hair off. Uh, I might have even stolen uh, the hair that I used for these. They, they might have been scrap pieces um, that I got from Dad's table. Or, or if I asked, you know, hey, do you have any scrap hair? You know, he, he threw me something that, you know, looked like this was just the end of a of a tail and the thread uh, I'm I remember using just regular sewing thread these are awful <laughs> but I remember being so proud of them um, I, I uh, showed my father um, he was very encouraging and I think this these were the jigs that he's like okay let me sit down and show you how to do it correctly so What we're going to do now is we're going to tie these jigs properly. So the very first jigs I tied and the jig, and these were jigs that I was so proud of. And I knew that once I did it, like this is, this is a way for me to express myself. This is a craft that I enjoy doing that I'm going to do over and over and over. So it was easy to find uh, matching jigs because we still use the same paint, the same brand of paint. We still do the same process. If I was a new jig tire, I would um, powder coat everything. But, uh, you know, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with the chartreuse one here. And instead of doing uh, brown, natural brown, what I have is We'll use a squirrel tail, which would be more appropriate to use for this uh, size jig head. 
And then for the uh, pink head, which had that black tail, I'm going to use black calf tail. Again, the hair that would be more appropriate for a jig this size. I will use 2 watt thread and uh, since this is a fluorescent yellow head, let's go with uh, just a black collar. Black thread, we'll stick with the black thread. And this is a 2 watt Danville nylon, round nylon, it's unwaxed. Lock on my 2 watt nylon thread about an eighth of an inch down, and then I walk it back to the head of the jig. And I like this squirrel for a couple reasons, um, but the main thing being the uh, tricolor that you get out of this. Uh, there's there's tan, there's black, there's white. There's a whole bunch of colors in this that um, just look fantastic. So we'll start with a small pinch. And I think on my original examples, the, the jigs that I was so proud of tying, I did get, I think Dad's comments is I did get the putting on two layers where I put on that first pinch of hair locked it on and gave it a twist um, that was one of his comments and my thread control even though the collars were a little bit wide um, he said my collars were were good and that was just from me for years just standing watching him tie and figuring it out so i'm going to make this tail the length of the body past the bend of the hook which on this vice is i'm going to aim for this second dot on my vice switch my grip keep this left hand pinch tight throughout this whole process couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, a couple wraps back towards the head, and I give it a twist. And then I can go back to this tail from about the same location. Grab a pinch. This one was a little thick. I got, well, I'm near the base of the tail, so some of these fibers were short. So I'm just going to pull those right off. And then I'm going to restack. some of the longest hairs just so my pinch is nice and aligned. I am pulling out some of these and just putting them right in the bin and not putting them back in my pinch. If this pinch was a little bit farther up on the squirrel tail, I wouldn't be pruning it <laughs> um, as much as I am. But because it was right down near the base of the tail, there's a lot of real short hairs and kind of fuzzy things. just want to make sure it looks nice. So again, we're going to adjust our grip until we get the length that we want. We want them to line up. Switch my pinch one last time and keep this nice and tight until the hair is locked on. And these jigs are very, very simple. Like I said, this was, these were the first jigs that I tied where I knew that um, I wanted to learn more about tying jigs. I wanted to do this for at least the rest of my life. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're not doing anything fancy. There's no, there's no tinsel. There's no fancy feathers. Um, 
but it's just the basic techniques that we're doing here. So I will lock on just like I always do. You can use a whip finish tool. These heads are nice and small, so that would be appropriate. And that collar is nice and compact, short. There is a good amount of hair. And let's see. So that's a great little jig, perfect for panfish, bluegill, sunfish, um, even perch. So to finish this off, we'll do it appropriately. We'll use our lacquer-based head cement. This would have been the same head cement that I would have had available to me way back in the day. Um, this is the last of my Wapsi lacquer-based head cement. Um, once that's gone, I will just go to a straight lacquer. You know, I'll find a brand, um, probably in the marine section, something that uh, is useful in uh, marine applications, and uh, just uh, use it straight from the can and adjust. You know, adjust the viscosity as needed. It'll thin it out as needed. So there's that one. What a, a pretty little jig. And I'm gonna, I'll probably use these. I'll, you know, I'll throw these in my box. It's a, they're useful. The second idea, what do we have here? It was the pink head with the black hair. And for this, I used to have a two watt pink thread and I don't know if I have that anymore. What is this? do have a 2 watt pink thread. This happens to be on a 900 yard spool. This is a uh, good rod. It's a rod wrapping thread. Um, this, is a, this is an old spool. This is probably from about the same time, time period as uh, these original jigs. And uh, I don't use the 950 yard spools in the 2 watt all that often, but I must have used it for something recently uh, because it was still on my table. So we will lock our thread on just like normal, walking it down about an eighth of an inch or so, and then back to the head. And for this jig, we're using black calf tail. Again, we're going to take our pinch and just like squirrel tail, calf tail doesn't always need so much restacking, but there are two or three hairs here that I will just pull out and place back in my pinch. Maybe a couple crooked ones or short medium sized ones that I just drop in my bin. And we are going to measure this the same way. The tail will be the length of the body past the bend of the hook. And I'm using that mark that's on the top of my vise just so I know that if I sat here and tied a dozen of them, they'd all be identical. Lock this on with one, two, three, four wraps towards the bend of the hook, three wraps towards the head. And I can grab it and just give that a twist all the way around. Dave from Double Hook Angling. His video was really neat. I really liked how he, <laughs> using the dog's hair, I have to admit I've done that before. The dog, the cat, I found a jig in my drawer of um, my oldest son, his first haircut. Um, I'm sure I have other jigs in there from the other three kids and their first haircuts. 
Um, it's one of those things that uh, jig tires do. I enjoy watching Dave's videos. Um, he has some really interesting insight into different techniques and how he goes about just doing it. Um, you can watch a dozen different tires. You'll see a dozen different techniques and you can you can pick up tips and tricks from all of them. Uh, there's there's no one perfect technique watching the way I do things. I tie a good jig but um, there, there's people that uh, do things a little bit better than me. Uh, there's techniques that I know that I don't use uh, because I'm more of a production tire so I, I can do it a little bit fancier but I don't just because you know you balance out uh, the way you the, the techniques that you use you know you're doing this for speed and uh, making sure that everything looks the same I might tie a jig much differently than if I was tying uh, one specific jig just for myself I encourage people to get out and uh, watch as many different tying videos as, as you can um, and try to take a little something from everybody so I walk the thread all the way back just to even up the the last wraps or the wraps closest to the bend of the hook just to make sure they're nice and even now I'm back up to the head I'll go back about halfway and then back to the head just to make that nice cone shape I'll continue that doing the whip finish on this where I'll take a few wraps towards the middle of the hook or the middle of the collar rather and then back up to the head just to make a nice cone shaped collar touching wraps and we will finish this off with our lacquer based head cement and there we go nice little pan fish jig on a 1 32nd head black calf tail unwaxed nylon round thread so I had a really good time with this collaboration it was just a fun exercise um, I thank Dave for participating in this uh, I encourage everybody go down uh, to the link below check out some of Dave's work uh, at double hook angling uh, his videos are, are fun to watch I watch all sorts of videos um, mostly when I'm sitting and tying uh, and you can always learn something new and Dave's got some really neat insight and uh, uses some really interesting techniques um, to tie some really good jigs I encourage any other tires if they want to do something similar to this uh, tying the first jig that you tied or we can do another topic I'm always interested in doing some sort of collaboration I just enjoy the camaraderie uh, one of time and in the love of this hobby so with that being said if you have any questions what we did here today comment down below as always like and subscribe and until next time guys keep tying and tight lines Thank you.